Wednesday, 7th of April 2021. A warm welcome to all of our friends, fans, community members, participants, squad mates and indeed viewers worldwide on various platforms. Thank you for coming today, thank you for supporting our channel and all our online gaming community here on Twitch. Um, a wonderful Easter has gone and we are back to normal by the looks of it. Uh, lots of news coming our way and generally having uh, a lot to do really. I've spent uh, quite a bit of my time <coughs> during the last couple of days doing admin and uh, you know lots of chores like for instance uploading some of the older streams to YouTube having a proper uh, well documented archive of everything that we do here on the channel um, sifting through some of the older news looking at all that is to follow within the next quarter preparing for the new channel structure and all that we said that we are going to be completing here so you know quite a lot of things to uh, consider and uh, not had really uh, any uh, live streams of games and I felt I really needed a break because uh, I had so many very dense and uh, action-packed sessions of Destiny, Wars and Apex, The Division and many other games, some of which were introduced here as part of my new slot that you've been introducing. So I think this week we'll still keep it quiet, um, re leaving just my podcast for um, its everyday occurrence and then from next week we'll crack on with some serious action. We've seen some inclusions I think in Warzone so I'm quite curious to find out what the inclusions are. Uh, we did hear about the new comic, uh, the new graphic novel being added to Apex. Uh, we had lots of news coming otherwise regarding lots of uh, um, PlayStation exclusives inclusive of some rumours about uh, uh, Hideo Kojima, who was previously tied to PlayStation with Konami and uh, Metal Gear Solid. Uh, you know, in the, the news are indicating that perhaps he's swinging towards Xbox and his new game will be released through Xbox Game Pass. So, I mean, lots of rumours floating about. I mean, we need to just wait and see what the corporation will actually confirm. You will be familiar with what I said many times before, <coughs> that um, if you if if you're at home with uh, financial markets, if you know how the trading works, the trading means increasing the value of somebody's capital <coughs> through buying and selling um, on financial markets. And um, there are some simple rules in there, which are, I guess, connected to what's called rumor and fact. Buy into the rumor, sell the fact is one of the rules, and it doesn't always work because it'd be very easy obviously for everyone to know that if a rumor is floating about like for instance Europe is going to be increasing in value because of very successful delivery of the vaccine eventually you know it's not happened yet but it, you know near future and then uh, you would expect that everyone will buy into the rumor they'll be buying the euro buying the currency um, but that doesn't have to be always the case you know sometimes people buy into the fact if the rumor appears to be fairly uncertain if it appears to be perhaps not backed up with some of the economic indicators or what they expect to be in place in order to verify that the investment is going to be secure with um, you know, good returns. So basically rumor becomes part and parcel of everyday trading, of everyday degree of investment and a lot of people will want to buy into a rumor because they will believe that by doing so they'll, they'll get in first which means when other people cotton on, once they hear the facts, the increment of the value, 
the increment on the value of the capital will take place and therefore they will make a significant amount of money in a very short period of time and therefore they may decide to sell their share um, you know that they have that they hold uh, in a particular company like for instance Bungie Activision or any other and that will be a good place for them to obviously collect their dividends overall if they keep selling the shares it means that they bought them at a low price and they're selling them on a much higher price because guess what people heard the rumor and then they were buying as the facts emerged like for instance a game um, of the magnitude uh, of Outriders released and having really bad bad reviews and bad um, press coverage uh, ever since the demo was released and then <coughs> you have the fact indicating that the gaming community embraced the game and the game selling like fruitcakes and uh, that itself is then a good indicator they will be buying shares of uh, people um, may fly and uh, you know um, people can fly in fact not may fly and therefore the value of the company will be increasing the shares will be bought and sold and that's just the way it works so that's the reason as to why we have so many rumors floating about through social networking and tabloids rarely will you get any rumors in the mainstream press as far as the english-speaking world is concerned but uh, you know the fact is that uh, the tabloids and social network in particular are inflating the ideas that something is likely to be happening and that is good enough for people who are in possession of huge amount of capital to invest in companies like for instance Activision, Bungie, Bioware or any other and this is the way it works so we have to be very careful with um, you know some of the rumors that are indeed floating about because they could be also based on either premonition or uh, wishful thinking or desire um, through which some members of the gaming community would want certain types of uh, development to take place we've seen that recently uh, in its own very negative format as uh, a lot of people were vlogging the story of a particular ending in The Last of Us 2 and also the position of Joel in the story which is completely fabricated I mean I'd be able to sometimes maybe, maybe somebody from the studio in, invented the story but you know I'd obviously no firm evidence of that sort and uh, uh, once the game was released there was a huge disappointment that what was expected i.e. what the rumour had said to everyone didn't take place in the game therefore people were unhappy and the developer never said that the story was going to be pursuing that sort of direction. They were not expecting uh, all details, bits and pieces which were described in the information that was floating on social networks. So, you know, <coughs> you could see it could, it could work in someone's favour, it could backfire and one way or the other the rumour is basically part and parcel of our everyday perception of the news and uh, it's very difficult sometimes to sift through all the information that's coming out, like for instance the information uh, today <coughs> that popped up about um, Hideo Kojima and uh, Microsoft is just a rumor you know that there may be a possibility there may be you know some degree of uh, certainty in there but we need to be waiting a little while to verify the facts and exactly that that's going to be happening obviously anyone who invests in Microsoft if they hear that Kojima becomes their uh, uh <coughs> a member of their family or a person who will be indeed producing a new game that will be released on Xbox Game Pass that will be giving them uh, excuse me I do apologise, my <coughs> voice is playing up for some reason and possibly to do with that uh, very, very cold Easter weekend. I spent a lot of time indoors and at one point I felt really, really cold uh, while I was in our neighbouring town and um, that could have been affecting my vocal cords to a degree. I'm not, not having any fever or you know, cold or anything like that, but uh, my uh, vocal cords will be sometimes uh, susceptible to, to that sort of temperature change and I think that probably is the reason as to why I'm sadly um, having <coughs> some problems in my voice I do, do apologize coming back to rumor versus fact um, getting everything on the news is usually um, coming in very very large volume it's the cost information I, I personally get very oversaturated with 
all the things that are coming on every single day. And it's it's combination of um, various social networks together with news hubs, um, with uh, the major kind of industry portals, as well as information coming from streamers and the community. So it's like you know quite a, quite a few things to get through. And uh, I always want to make sure that what I state here live online is verifiable by certain facts that we are not you know coming up with ideas in which we are convincing our community that's exactly what's going to be happening the best the best example of um, our recent kind of uh, <coughs> news uh, is uh, uh, the rumor about discord they talked about um, I think it was figure of 10 billion uh, mentioned I need to double check because I remember telling you about this on the day and uh, the rumor was obviously floating and links to Microsoft and I guess connected to Bethesda acquisition but the next big thing that Microsoft have been purchasing is indeed a Discord and you know that Discord is the most popular independently run uh, chat forum that people have attached their Twitch channels and to online gaming so it, it's very very good you get private messages from all the participants it's well policed and sort of well guarded with uh, uh, rules and uh, you know the ev every person who runs the Discord channel, particularly the streamer, may have also some moderators who are watching wh whatever is being said, and it becomes a very very active, very dynamic um, system to which people can connect, communicate, and share their views and thoughts in addition to what they experience online. Don't forget, for the streamers who are very very busy, who have um, maybe twenty, thirty thousand people watching, or even let's say a few hundred, uh, not everybody will be happy with. Um, the lengthy period of waiting, the typing messages and chat uh, before they get a response. So Discord will be always given to a smaller number of that community. People are seen as the regulars, the subscribers, or you know the investors in the channel, and that they can connect individually. They can have also voice chats as well as uh, exchange text messages, um, and you know communicate in terms of whatever is happening on the channel. For myself, my Discord is an extension of my Twitter. The only difference there is that I have on my Discord separate communities singled out and these are the communities attached to the games that I stream, play or indeed I feel attached to. So we'll have obviously Destiny, we'll have Warzone, we'll have Apex, we'll have PUBG, The Division, we'll have Gears of War, Mass Effect, you know these games are out there. Artridus is the latest acquisition and then people who are interested in these games members of those communities will pop in and say a few things or connect with others. So that that's the idea behind it. Anyway, coming back to the rumour versus fact, um, the news coming in are obviously in very, very great quantity and uh, I'd say I, I had some uh, messages coming in from our viewers uh, a little while back and I'm asking, it's prior to my uh, podcast <coughs> coming here on the channel, they asked questions about where do you get your news because you're always kind of very, very well informed. And um, I did say the news do not come from one source. And if you want to be well informed, if you are, um, you know, wanting to be uh, in sync with everything that's happening either in industry, what you do want to have is a selection of the best, the well informed, in the know hubs that are following whatever is happening every single day. So basically, I follow all the magazines um, that are online Eurogamer, Games Radar, Game Rant, um, Rock Paper Shotgun. Uh, you know the list just goes on and on um, push square um, and uh, therefore I always get their news feed through my Twitter feed because I'm connected to the profiles and generally these magazines are posting everything which is you know kind of magazine related um, they don't have that much of uh, individual community content so therefore it's very easy to go through it but at times becomes very very voluminous in addition to that I also read magazines and you know, I read um, things coming from the developers, like for instance Bungie, Bethesda, Bio were the big ones. So that all comes together again on my feed. So Twitter becomes a very fundamental, very essential tool for my uh, um, everyday kind of uh, uh, news checks. And uh, in addition to this, I will be also getting some news from other associates, also streamers, as well as my community members. So it really comprises all of those together. Don't forget the companies like Microsoft and Sony that run separate entities on the internet and Microsoft in particular is excelling with their uh, massive, massive YouTube channel with huge number of presentations, trailers and everything else and um, obviously watch and listen to everything they do there and that's really my, um, probably one of the most important sections to which I get uh, live 
day-to-day -day news because the podcast uh, this week and uh, this month on Xbox, inside Xbox presentations, they're really full of very, very interesting content with plenty of uh, um <coughs> interesting guests and presentations as well as interviews for everyone to enjoy. So uh, very, very important to read and you know listen to them. But at the end of the day, it all becomes very, very voluminous. It is a huge number of things to get through and you'd appreciate that if you have a major release of selection of games that are being just promoted like we had in the last quarter of 2020, you know, two new consoles launched, all the games attached to them. Uh, it was just completely insane. It really hardly any time um, for any form of respite. So coming back to my earlier point, uh, the overall streaming is not just including, well, depending on how you do it, obviously, if you are just wanting to be streaming one game and you're not interested in anything else, it will be fairly straightforward, but you will have to be spending a lot of time on your admin with your community because you will build quite a sizable community of followers, be it for Mass Effect or Fallout or Gears of War, any other, and then you have to be communicating and you know building your relationships. And you will find sometimes with the regulars that they will know exactly when the stream starts, a because you have your schedule, and b they'll get the notifications. They'll be there from the beginning, and they will be just waiting for you to crack on. So it'll be a lot of uh, uh, community-based work. I think for my channel, it's that as well as all the other attached to the news and all the things coming from the industry and that itself can be fairly fairly time consuming but uh, um, I find overall um, live online gaming particularly if we are talking about PvP games very tiring and don't forget I'm no longer a teenager I'm obviously a mature gamer and I've been you know gaming for playing video games for more than 30 years and um, I do have to have breaks I need to have uh, uh, you know, kind of seasonal uh, windows where I can just relax and do my own thing as well as provide you with some interesting content on other forums. I mean, Twitter is one of them, provide you with uh, lots of news and interesting uh, bits of trivia as well as community content every single day in very large volume. Then you have uh, Instagram with some uh, interesting screenshots and uh, concept art, which I've been publishing already from the very beginning when we started out with this channel. You have Facebook. We uh, have to say, Facebook. I've not been entertaining too much because of um, well, Twitter. Obviously, uh, took uh, uh, the upper hand. But uh, the Facebook is more like a small encyclopedia, providing various bits of information, uh, like history on certain games, and that will be look that will be concerning the games which are fairly big on the channel, the Division, uh, Halo, um, uh, Destiny, uh, Mass Effect. Uh, Warzone, etc., etc. So you, you'll get to know more about the developer and all that's been happening behind the scenes as these games were created. Uh, so these are the obviously Discord I have. It's one of the latest. We've created it last year, and uh, we have a small community of regulars in there. Some of them have been attached to Destiny or to the Division, Apex, and most important Warzone. So you know people who are the nucleus of our um, kind of online community. People who participate on a regular basis here with a live online gaming and uh, dialogue are there. So it's it's like a, my own separate hub through which A, I can provide the selected uh, number of news which are attached to these games, I the games I stream here on the channel. So it's fairly specific, it's fairly selective and uh, it's not as randomized as you would get it on Twitter, as well as having obviously the means through which the community members can connect with each other and talk to myself about specific issues. So altogether, very, very good, very vibrant. I'm very pleased to say that um, the community is constantly growing and it's no longer attached to just one game, which was the case certainly for about two years here on the channel. So during the last year, we kind of branched out. We expanded to other games and other people would have come in. I mean, it's interesting, uh, as many of our Destiny veterans <coughs> also are um, avid variety gamers and they play all other games on different platforms. For instance, we have several um, community members uh, based in the US who play on PCs, PlayStation and um, Xbox consoles. Recently, some of the guys on Xbox were also playing on Android because of the xCloud. So that's, you know, that's truly wonderful. It's a, it is providing us with quite a variety of uh, 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 different means to which we can both connect with games and then communicate with others. I'm looking forward to a new chat um, messenger or app which will be fully embedded within Xbox uh, Game Pass. I think it will make a world of difference because the individual games have sort of like Warzone, for instance, or Destiny. They, ha they have this capacity for you to uh, 
uh, throw in chat messages and also you can be using the messenger which is attached to a, a PlayStation or Xbox but it, it's not really as immediate or as interactive as you would want it to be and it's much easier for people who are streaming and using OBS um, in order to get the messages you know, displayed live online so people can see them and read them and uh, we have been using this uh, for my Destiny streams for a good two years um, and I've had chat displayed fully on my screen but there were some complaints, well some concerns coming in from people who watch Destiny on smaller devices like Android and they felt that if we had in addition to the usual chat display on Twitch to the right of the screen even the other which is you know the kind of in-game chat display uh, they, they, the picture would be far too small so they were asking whether this could be indeed uh, removed and uh, I'll follow that advice and uh, this uh, this chat window which we always had previously displayed is no longer there. In fact that chat window was very useful for myself because I don't need a secondary display in order to read messages and that makes it very very easy for me to be responded to anything incoming. The difficulties we've had with uh, that Twitch chat uh, that was displayed on the screen, like the, the on-screen display, um, was that I didn't get all the messages and frequently if people were typing messages on the PC they wouldn't be received. It's just really weird. It's probably to do with cross-platform access to Twitch and uh, I would get messages on my uh, PC, I wouldn't get them on Android or indeed on my uh, screen display and that was causing some issues as well. So I think in order to minimize, in order to uh, to a streamline I resorted to my secondary display where the chat is just purely there and then we don't have any of that on the main screen and that's you know that that's basically the, the way it's been run now for a little while and uh, also it's easier for me to have a better picture but you know 16 screen and don't have any other interferences but I do miss the on-screen display of the chat because if you were to be doing it on a PC uh, you'd use an external app that would provide you with chat display on the screen that is not really as massive as the one which I use in PlayStation. So you know, both both options, both methods have their own pros and cons and it's all down to the streamer and community preference. I think one needs to play it by ear. Generally this channel from the beginning has been all about connecting and communicating. So it wasn't all about gaming. Well, it's obviously delicate to gaming, but gaming being like a social network, the means to which people get to know each other and therefore everyone quite enjoyed and liked the messages and all that's been you know fully displayed on on my screen at the time but as we carry on you know we get new apps the tech moves on new things are invented and we all need to be adjusting so my easter was wonderful i've told you all about it religion the last few days and uh, beautiful weather is still continuing and persisting here in our local area today again is a very nice sunny but very very chilly day a beautiful strolls in our local park and our nature reserve and you know yet again I've uh, gone back to the usual routine got to say in recent times I've been waking up a bit late and I don't know whether the vaccine that I received a couple of weeks ago um, is affecting my sleeping pattern but I actually got to bed very early it was before midnight and kind of wake up too late which is after nine o'clock and therefore my day seems to be I wouldn't say it doesn't seem short, but it I kind of kick off a bit later than usual. My preference is really starting out about eight o'clock, and uh, you know to have enough time to prepare. I because of my health condition, I have to exercise every single day when I wake up, basically on waking, and have really nice hearty breakfast with some good hot drinks, and you know I'm fully ready then to crack on with everything. The other thing I'm very aware of is that my time spent on my other online hub, Film Dialogue had been definitely under pressure due to my streams and all the work here as Gaming Dialogue and this channel basically overtook or I should say they took off in a, you know, in a big way a couple of years ago so I really need to be balancing out the two because my gaming my film community on Film Dialogue is very sizable and I've been running it for very many years <coughs> and it's a bit like the community that we used to have attached to British Film Institute or National Film Theatre in London uh, just made global and just made more interactive so I'm um, you know fairly privileged to, to have quite a number of industry leaders attached to film dialogue and um, the posting so is very well received we get uh, very many um, interactions with comments and views on recommendations and all else so I think I've been lagging behind somewhat and specifically on my film dialogue blog I've not done any postings now for almost a year and uh, you know that puts me to shame 
because it had a number of readers. But my blog is more like a, like a film history manual. It is uh, following the lives of um, influential film directors and personalities from the world of film as well as many many stars and specific films and also have a section that is allowing you to be watching films live online so if you're an avid film fan then definitely uh, do have a look and join our film dialogue community and then watch some of the films and send us some comments and views and you know we want to make it as interactive as possible I will be running film dialogue podcast very very soon and I worked on the concept already for a little while. In fact, this podcast and what we do here was originally intended to be an experiment uh, lasting maybe anything between 4 to 12 weeks in order to test the waters how you know interactivity today within the gaming community or within the public forum, you know, any, irrespective of which one we're looking at, would actually work. And uh, I certainly um, had a wonderful experience and I couldn't really believe how quickly the gaming community would come in and how everything would take off and uh, you know I want to be really building the same sort of interactivity uh, on film dialogue within the same sort of concept the same format so um, I'm still toying with some ideas and some structures what I want to apply and also need to see what platform I'll be using for my regular podcasts and uh, the delivery isn't there but it will be on Twitch or maybe YouTube maybe we'll have to tease Maybe this, um, the gaming-based forums will be exclusively on Twitch and then the others on YouTube. And I need to really investigate that in depth. I'm not 100% sure uh, which platform might be the very best. But um, I want to really say to my friends who perhaps are asking, why is he not streaming as many games and all this? Well, we'll have to really balance it out because these are two projects which are, you know, long-term. And uh, Gaming Dialogue has been run for roughly three years and Film Dialogue about nine, I think. And... Uh, therefore I want to dedicate my time accordingly and also don't forget uh, both activities film viewing or writing on film history as well as analyzing games and you know interacting and playing them is very very time consuming and as you know if you were to be watching some B flicks of 1930s or um, some of the cheapies which were usually produced up to the duration of 67 70 65 to 70 minutes on average they were about one hour long then it's easier to squeeze in maybe three or four of these films. And I, I, really, I, I really adore um, the pre code films from 1927 to 1933. And there were many films produced there which were, well, you know, the, the length was about one hour. So therefore, it's very easy to get through them and see quite a few and write on them, you know, with ease. But that's not always the case with um, <coughs> more contemporary films. And uh, everything takes time. And you know, as you kind of push on uh, in age, you become very aware of the fact that uh, you know, we are not infinite, and uh, you need to be kind of productively looking at how you are going to be using your time and what field you'll dedicate um, you, you will be dedicating your time and effort to. So um, I think in the future we'll probably see uh, a combination of two separate entities here: one dedicated dedicated to games, and the other to film. Because obviously here on my podcast in the near future, I'll try to bring in other participants, most notably other streamers and gamers, who are going to be then talking um, about their experiences and you know make it very similar to what other big podcasts review do, both on Twitch and YouTube. And um, instead of having lengthy discussions through myself, we'll have maybe somebody else will talk about their personal experience, how they built the channel, how they got the viewers, and you know etc. etc. It will be very interesting. Um, I guess uh, uh, for everyone. And uh, let me think, what else do we have? Right, so the games I'm playing at the moment are um, uh, Outriders, Yakuza, and The Outer Worlds. And I have to say, The Outer Worlds have been a true delight. And I'm absolutely enjoying and loving the game. Really, really saddened to see that not many people are either streaming or watching this game on Twitch because it is a terrific, terrific game. Um, I've been in two minds as to why that was, uh, whether it is to do with the fact that it's Xbox exclusive, so therefore we have all the other communities, you know, not there, um, or whether it's to do with some other reasons, like for instance the structure of the game, or the game's been very well marketed, I mean, there have been lots of trailers and adverts and everything everywhere. I need to research that somewhat, but I can certainly tell you, for me, it's been a true revelation. I've had it on the top of my list for quite some time, ever since I played it uh, on 
um, um, I think it's not Euro Gamer, it's a Game Informer. Is it a Game Informer? Infogamer, I beg your pardon, Infogamer, uh, a couple of years ago, and this was around the release date. And uh, they reworked the game, Obsidian, and the game starts in different fashion, a prologue and you, you know, proper kind of in game tutorials, so you, you really f can easily find uh, your ropes there. And I think they've all gone away from the idea of a massive big world which you need to experience yourself because that presently that's turning out to be very unpopular. You've seen also um, this week, during last week, in fact, uh, the new expansion for No Man's Sky was released, and it's making sure that people are not playing the game by themselves. They can bring in their friends from the beginning and enter separate worlds together. They have proper um, guidance, therefore, the game is going to be easier to play. Um, I think the original, what we can call the experience mode, like the one they had in Ghost Recon Breakpoint, will be left uh, as an option for everyone to tackle and I think it's definitely a better modern more sort of uh, um, present in age type of approach because as we were developing the multiplayer and the communication and building our communities at the beginning of the last decade uh, it was a different era we had no twitch I think twitch changed everything and uh, you know you can stream a game and have everybody coming in and then having phenomenal quantitative interactions where people can train you, teach you, tell you what to do, just like what I've done here with Destiny 1 and 2, where I was completely taught by the veterans who knew everything and just followed the advice and had the privilege of being able to play with quite a few of them live online as well. Easy for me to learn, easy for everyone else to learn from our interactions and therefore I think the overall perspective on what the game needs to provide have changed quite considerably and that's particularly the case for a single player games. Uh, no Man's Sky obviously isn't that, but the outer world is, and I think overall, at present, we can certainly say that um, PvP and multiplayer games are, um, you know, prevalent in the industry. They're more popular than the single player games, so that that might be the reason. Anyway, the outer world is a wonderful, wonderful RPG uh, combining various genres, uh, looking a bit like a graphic novel and. Uh, the design similar to Borderlands, although it's completely unrelated. And uh, what's phenomenal about it is its dialogue, its structure, its number of characters you can approach, the sheer quantity of NPCs, quests, subquests, planets, you name it. If you liked Fallout, well, the Outer World is going to be definitely uh, your favourite, and I'd like to invite everyone to join. Um, progressing forward quite rapidly, but the world of the outer world is incredibly big and there's so many things to do. And it's interesting, similar to Fallout, if you are kind of um, doing it fast and you know rushing it, you are not then talking to every single NPC who is likely to be met in certain areas, and therefore you're not unlocking the content. Loads of NPCs will ask you certain things in which they'll try to, through which they will try to connect with you and if you ask specific questions you'll be unlocking then the additional content so it's down to you and also the overall character structure of all the NPCs and the lead character is very complex it's very well developed so similar to Fallout you have like three different character traits um, one is um, polite and disciplined um, the other one is uh, ironic and the third one is aggressive and unpleasant and you need to choose basically one line of inquiry. Don't really keep mixing it because the responses will be then, you know, quite uh, varied from various NPCs. And uh, if you, let's say, choose to be ironic, just stick to that from the beginning to end, and you'll be getting a certain quantity of con uh, certain um, content accordingly. And uh, and then you have lots of questions which are story based. So frequently you will look at the dialogues, like six or seven things which you can choose from and do not skim through the story-based dialogue because it's telling you a lot about the game and it's unlocking additional content. So it's down to you whether you want it to be a game that you finish in 10 hours or in 1000 hours. It's you know down to the player preference. And I just say that for myself, for the games of the magnitude, like for instance the Oblivion series, I mean the um, Elder Scrolls series, or Mass Effect, or uh, the Outer Worlds, it's all about the enjoyment of the story the quality of that interaction you have with the characters and the overall experience of that massive big open world. I mean, I'm definitely um, a lover of open world games. I've been, you know, into 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 those types of uh, um, titles right from the beginning, and it just provides me with a very very um, cinematic, very uh, fiction-like based experience where 
the literature, the films, the music, the graphic design, everything is, is, is in there. And you are kind of really connecting with all of it within one big world. And uh, quite frankly, I think um, the best video games of today are really kind of pushing the envelope for the more advanced type of cinematic experience. And you've seen that recently. They talked about um, creating quite a selection of films and television series which are exclusively based on the original scripts that were in uh, certain games. So, for instance, The Last of Us will be a television series and maybe a film, then uh, Borderlands, then uh, Mass Effect, and you know, the list just goes on and on. Uh, and obviously, we did have some screen versions already, but it's certainly opening up a huge number of ideas and possibilities for uh, the producers and the developers, and that's just the way things are today. So, The Outer World has been my Easter weekend game, played it at all times. The other two I tried as uh, and Yakuza have been slightly on the back burner. Well, Yakuza, first of all, because it is a game that would complement the Outer Worlds perfectly. You can play Yakuza for a couple of hours and then you know, migrate to the Outer Worlds. Yakuza is an adventure game and it does have also uh, story driven chapters, more than 1000 chapters in the entire series if uh, really kind of brought together. So I will be playing Yakuza for, for a long while and thanks to Jeff Rubinstein for rec recommending the series and drawing attention to what is a truly remarkable, truly remarkable uh, works and uh, uh, certainly one of the very best games I ever would have come across. It is very cinematic, very story driven and most importantly uh, the characters are so well developed you feel for them straight away and it's just extraordinary. It's, it's sort of heightening that perhaps even more compared to what we've seen in Japanese films and it does just combine all different genres. You have the crime film, you have Yakuza, you know, really elements of samurai fighting type of uh, sequences. You have children, you have, uh, uh, most importantly, the portrayal of uh, the present day Japan with all of their contemporary issues. You know, people working hard, families breaking down, children with their parents, problems with crime in inner city areas, homelessness, you name it, it's all there. And you can be using uh, whatever you find, you know, from um, telephone booths through uh, uh, sweet shops, uh, um, you know, it's just playing golf, playing tennis, playing football, play, or playing darts, I mean, you name it, it's just all kinds of things in there for everyone to enjoy, and uh, most highly recommend it to everyone. And then obviously Outriders, a game that we are going to be uh, streaming in here, hopefully we are going to be building a community of uh, uh, those uh, uh, warriors attached to the game. Sadly, it did have quite a few problems technically because of the sheer volume of participants. I think they were, they were reaching one, 170,000 during the weekend. It was 130,000 on the first day of concurrent players coming into the service. And uh, that was really um, preventing us from accessing to the service in time and, uh, you know, the usual types of problems. So we, we had several streams and then I decided to give it a break because obviously after about a week, Loads of people who completed the campaign uh, will just fizzle away and will have a much easier ride. And don't forget, they will be working on patches and improvements and everything else, so the game will be uh, fully fledged. But, but I can certainly say that I'm very pleased that I had been able to uh, stream our uh, this on the first day, which is uh, on the day of its release. And it's only for the second time I've been able to do that, because generally you will know that I do not buy games um, brand new and I don't really pre order obvious reason because I'm a huge games fan and you have a massive collection of games and you know if you're buying all the new releases you, you basically can't be um, accruing that many because of the expense and all else and um, it's, a, it's a true privilege to be able to access the games on the release date immediately through these streaming services and PlayStation are not giving us that and we've not had any games on PS that were released in the streaming services uh, on you know at the same time as for instance when it became accessible to the general public but Xbox certainly hadn't pioneered it and we've had quite a number of games most important the exclusives uh, launched through Xbox Game Pass on the day of the release so you know Gears for instance and um, Halo Master Chief Collection the list just goes on and on and the uh, latest, well, I tried this is obviously the latest that they offered on the release date, but importantly, most importantly, uh, I tried this are the first game that are basically not Microsoft exclusive. They are um, produced and uh, um, delivered by 
um, people can fly, a Polish developer, and Square Enix. We know obviously Square Enix from Final Fantasy series. So it's the first third party title that is offered on its release date through Xbox um, uh, Game Pass. And obviously, the entire community will be watching, they will all respond. Uh, as it I if it turns out to be hugely successful, I'm quite certain they'll be looking at other titles in the future being procured for a limited, probably, amount of time to be present on the platform. But I can certainly say from my experience, it's been a huge success. Um, it's, you know, they promoted. I've tried this beautifully from the beginning, and uh, they've taken a biscuit, basically, I'm afraid, because ultimately. Uh, PlayStation will certainly be uh, lagging behind with non-inclusiveness of uh, some of the titles on their um, release date through their streaming platform and you could see that they're trying to catch up but um, it's too little too late. This month we are getting Borderlands 3 and um, what's the other game? Uh, I've gone dead. There are two big games offered on... Uh, let me just have a look. <laughs> I do apologise, uh, but uh, suddenly I couldn't remember the first title. Yeah, for whatever reason, Days Gone was gone. <laughs> it just didn't want to come come to uh, the front of my mind and it's just really too bad isn't it? Anyway, it's Days Gone and uh, Borderlands 3 that they introduced. Days Gone was um, accessible through... Uh, um, hang on a minute. No, 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 I got this wrong, actually. Just a moment. I keep mixing up two different things. PlayStation Art Services, but PS Plus, of course. And, um... So we have... Marvel Avengers. Marvel Avengers and Borderlands 3. These two games are now offered to us through um, PS Now Services and you can access them immediately. So I'm definitely going to be um, playing both games extensively. Marvel Avengers are played here on Xbox uh, whilst uh, they were uh, given to us in a beta and alpha format. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, uh, also I played Borderlands 3 when offered for free. And as they obviously are accessible through PS Now services straight away, I'll be hammering these as soon as possible. I'm particularly curious about Marvel Avengers because I've not played the full game, just gone through Alpha and uh, obviously Borderlands 3 I know exactly um, what the game's like, but um, for the Avengers it had really very negative reviews so I'll be wanting to find out for myself whether the reviews were relevant or not and as well as the technical issues and also what's the other one? Um, there's a third game in there, hang on. The Long Dark the Long Dark is also accessible on uh, Xbox Game Pass and I played it and it's a very very good game and uh, it's a survival game where you need to be um, remaining alive for quite some time as you're facing lots of different hostilities and really very good graphics, very good gameplay so most highly recommend it and uh, Days Gone is offered this month on PlayStation Plus for free so that's what it is, this is why I kept telling you about it and. Um, let me see... <laughs> On PlayStation Plus we are getting Days Gone which was until recently also available on the streaming services. I played it a bit and then suddenly it was gone. Uh, so it's really quite good to see that I'm getting it for free and I'll have it forever. And I can play it also on full screen because you'll be familiar with um, PS Now services that don't really come up as full screen 
um, you know, when streamed live, and unless you obviously downloaded the game. And uh, so uh, Days Gone is Wonder Games and uh, Zombie Army 4 Dead War. I never play Zombie Army. Anyone knows what the game's like? Are you familiar with Zombie Fest? And it sounds very much like one of these. Continue to alternate history of Zombie Army trilogy in a harrowing spine chilling shooter for one to four players set in 1940s Europe. Look at that. Uh, Oddworld Soul Storm. Uh, that game is available for everyone on PlayStation 5. And what's very good about um, the Plus services is that even if you're not presently in possession of your PS5 console, you can claim these games, they'll stay in your account, and then once you migrate to the new console, you'll be able to play them. So I want to say to all of my community members, absolutely, you've got to make sure that you claim all the PlayStation 5 games through your account, uh, and not just the ones which are applicable to or playable on the PS4. And lots of people didn't realize this. I've seen some messages on Twitter saying, only if we knew that a couple of months ago when this started. Well, you didn't, but uh, you need to be double checking the entries on the PlayStation app that tells you what games you're getting on PlayStation services, PlayStation Plus services every single month. And it tells you clearly that you can be claiming all of them at once. I've had a problem in December with uh, Just Cause 4. Uh, it looked like, I mean, they, they, they tried the system through which you, you would have to be downloading uh, and then after you downloaded the game in full, it would register. Unless you downloaded it, it wouldn't register. It was just an experiment and it backfired, so people complained and they've done away with it. So I think from January, we were able to um, claim the games directly. You just, you know, click on get and then it pops up and it's in your account. You don't have to download it, basically. Um, you know, they, they probably tried um, to get some figures and they wanted to see whether the system that Microsoft have would work for them but they're lagging behind. So these are the games so for everyone who's on PlayStation you must be claiming Days Gone, it's a terrific game, Zombie Army 4, Dead War and Odd Oddworld Soul Storm. All of these are downloadable through PlayStation Plus and then like we said uh, Marvel Avengers and um, Borderlands 3 and The Long Dark are the new additions to PS Now services. Right, so uh, let me just see very briefly. Um, we'll have a look at the news. Let's see what we've got there. Right, the biggest news that arrived today is uh, um, all linked yet again to Game Pass. You will know that they're really throwing in lots of different titles and plenty of interesting games are coming our way. So we have quite a selection coming soon to Game Pass and I need to say that some of them are instantly accessible through cloud, others through cloud and console, and then some of those will be also accessible through PC. It's interesting because some of the games are not accessible through all three platforms, right? And therefore you need to kind of uh, adjust your gaming accordingly. But what's beautiful is that you'll be able to see through your app exactly where you can get them. And at the moment, the biggest investment of um, the Xbox uh, Game Pass team is on instant access through Android and xCloud. So loads of games have been introduced through um, uh, Play With Touch, which means you get uh, um, on-screen display, uh, on-screen controls, and uh, you can instantly get in. You don't have to have your controller with you, which obviously makes it easier for you to play. You don't need extra batteries for your controller and you know everything else. So let's see what games are coming our way on Xbox Game Pass. So we've heard Grand Theft Auto 5. I'm very excited about that. You believe in me, I've not played the game at all. I've not played it. It was uh, for a short while accessible through um, PS Now services and was time limited, I think. And uh, I've not played it. Was it was an Xbox Game Pass? I can't remember. One of the streaming services. It might have been on um, Xbox Game Pass. But it was there for a very short while and I didn't go in early enough because of my streams and therefore missed it. So I really look forward to that. And then uh, let's see. Uh, we have uh, Grand Theft Auto 5, Cloud and Console, April the 8th. And uh, uh, that will be uh, instant accessible through Cloud Services and Console. And then we have Zombie Army 4, Dead War and uh, that will be accessible through cloud and console and PC and that's a game coming in through ID of Xbox. Then we have Disneyland Adventures coming to cloud April April the 8th. I should have said the dates actually. It's the April the 8th so that's uh, tomorrow. 
so that's really good. And um, uh, I see. So it's tomorrow they've had Grand Theft Auto coming. That's fantastic. We can try it straight away. And then Disney Adventures, Rush, a Disney and Pixar adventure on cloud as well, April the 8th. NHL 21 on console, that's going to be part of EA Play, that will be delivered on April the 12th. Rain on your parade, ID of Xbox, April the 15th, cloud console and PC, that looks like a really fun game. Pathway, ID at Xbox, April the 15th, and uh, um, well, just to illuminate a bit, Rain on Your Parade is uh, um, a wonderful indie game. Travel the world as a cute cardboard cloud and win everybody's. So you're going to be a cloud. Unlock new methods of mischief, so you'll be sitting pranks in other 50 levels, loads of different achievements, each with a unique setting and objectives. Make new friends and help them too. It's it's an adorable, uh, it's an adorable and par thoroughly enjoyable game. Pathway, assemble a bold team of adventurers and journey through the desert wilderness in 1936. Nazi influence had spread, along with rumours of secret excavations, mysterious artefacts and gruesome occult rituals that are similar to Indiana Jones, right? Um, Outwit foils in strategic squad combat, locate ancient treasures before they all fall into the wrong hands. I guess Indiana Jones meeting uh, Lara Croft in 1936. MLB The Show 21, this is a sports game, as you know, Cloud and Console, April the 20th. Play over 50 cloud-enabled games with Xbox Touch controls, so that's wonderful as well. Um, and uh, they are constantly introducing new games. We, we spent some time in one of our recent podcasts on the backward compatibility and touch controls. I told you all about it, so I wouldn't, wouldn't like to go through this, but just very briefly... Um, Last September, they were thrilled to launch uh, their first game with Xbox Touch Controls. This was Minecraft Dungeons, and since then, Touch Controls remained one of the top requested features for cloud gaming. Therefore, they obviously worked on many more uh, to unlock new ways to play on your Android mobile devices without the need for an external controller. And today, we're excited to share that we have been working with developers to bring you 50 plus great touch enabled games that you can now play with Xbox Cloud Gaming Beta. In addition to Minecraft Dungeons, get the games like Sea of Thieves, Gears 5, Dragon Quest 11, Echoes of Elusive Age, Slade Aspire and many more. I mean really, you know, just, just to name what, four or five of these games, they just, they're, they're one better than another. And then if you're interested you can actually click on the app, you'll get the list of all of these which are instantly accessible and they are still working on many more titles. So 50 delivered at the moment, probably 500 still to come. So you have also a um, new Xbox Game Pass experience on Xbox console. Playing games with your friends just got easier with Xbox Game Pass on your console. Within the Game Pass you'll see a new selection that says play with friends when you have people in your friends list playing any of the games in Xbox Game Pass. You'll be able to either jump right into a joinable multiplayer session or begin installing the games your friends are currently playing. So that's very useful. I mean generally if you have a small group of friends, like let's say two dozen, and they're your regulars, like your core, the, the core of your community, then that will be so useful because you'll be able to see straight away what game games they're doing. You'll be able to message them, ask them to join you, and it'll make it so easily accessible. So absolutely, uh, some other very interesting, very new games that were added to um, uh, the Game Pass Genesis Noir. I played it a bit, uh, not gone through it yet, but um, really very, very beautifully designed, jazzy type of game comprising uh, very weird animations and very unusual environment, which is based on Big Bang, uh, surprise, surprise, and then the elements of um, crime-driven stories of film noir. So for anyone who likes jazzy music and atmosphere of the 1930s, 1940s, definitely that is going to be your top game. Also, it is uh, um, offered through ID at Xbox and Game Pass, so you can just simply download Octopath Traveler, a wonderful, wonderful RPG, eight travelers, eight adventures, eight roles to play, a massive epic journey across the vast and wondrous world of Ostera, and you can discover the captivating stories of each one of the travelers. A beautiful game and highly recommended to everyone. I've looked at it and it's been remastered. It just, you know, works wonders in that. And then uh, we've had some DLCs, and among us, the Airship Update, that is available on PC. Gears 5 Free Batista as Marcus Skin. In fact, I looked it up today. Uh, I wanted to see how the new Gears 5 Ultimate Edition would work on my 
mobile with touch controls and you know they worked well I've got to say I was surprised it seemed that everything was fairly uh, accelerated and the frame rate was quite good so I definitely I don't want to play games on, on my phone for obvious reasons I prefer you know the action on massive big screens so I have a look at this free Batista as Marcus and I better really hurry up because it's available until April the 12th so actually I don't have to download it I can just claim it through my xCloud you see the benefits even if you don't play the game you can just claim the skins and that's available until the April the 12th so I'll do that straight away as soon as I finish my podcast I'll, I'll get them and you'll be familiar that Batista's Mark skin is for free in the in-game store and previously released for use in campaign the Batista's Mark skin can be equipped immediately for versus and horde modes that's the multiplayer grounded photo mode update so that's pretty good grounded yet another obsidian game I played it a bit and I quite liked it it reminded me uh, of um, what's, the, what's the game called uh, Drake Hollow and uh, is it Drake Hollow? Hang on I you know my brain's not working today at all this is ridiculous no puts me to shame I don't want to be telling you the titles which appear to be uh, self-invented you know definitely not a good idea The app is quite extraordinary when you look at the titles and then you have filter by, you can just so, you know, sort them out according to uh, um, any of the sections. Online multiplayers, uh, local multiplayer, local co-op, online co-op, play anywhere, single player, cross-platform, plays on Xbox One, optimized, it's just extraordinary, honestly, just incredible how things are developing. Anyway, instead of really sifting through this, we'll have a look at the rest. Halo the Master Chief Collection Season 6, the free Season 6 update for Halo the Master Chief Collection starts on April the 7th. So that is indeed starting today. And enjoy the new content like Halo 3 armor, vehicle and weapon skins inspired by Halo Fight Team Raven. And then you will get uh, over 100 additional seasonal rewards. You know, that puts me to shame. I didn't realize they were running seasons on Xbox Game Pass, on, the, um, on Halo. So just bear with me. Xbox Game Pass Ultimate Perks. I claimed all of these. Sea of Thieves, Ocean Crawler Bundle, Gems of War, uh, Shadow Dragon, Legendary Starter Pack, Fantasy Star Online 2, Apex Legends. Well, this one will have uh, <coughs> a special N7, Normandy 7 Mass Effect charm. So you can then attach that wonderful uh, Bioware charm to your weapons in Apex, which is exactly what I did. Spellbreak Chapter 2 Pass, April the 8th, and then you have some quests as well, if you want to be uh, getting extra Microsoft Rewards points. Don't forget, if you are on Xbox Game Pass, you have a multitude of, cho of choices, you can complete lots of different um, quests, and you're accruing then Microsoft points, and these points can be used for many different reasons, and for many different things. Uh, all of them can be redeemed, and my personal preference is getting my monthly ultimate subscription for free so once you get to 12,000 Microsoft uh, uh, rewards points you can just claim them and therefore your next month of Microsoft of your um, Xbox Game Pass ultimate subscription will be given to you for free I've used it already several times and it worked perfectly for me so I really highly recommend it the way it works is it is just literally designed for hardcore gamers people who are interested in completing and collecting trying out different games, downloading, doing the achievements and then you know basically snapping up all the rewards points and uh, presently you have Forza Horizon 4 150 points uh, uh, PUBG 150 points if you play two matches, Alien Isolation 150 points, Elder Scrolls Online 150 points so basically you get one, two, three 
three, four, four times. So that'd be 600 points straight away. Don't forget, if you complete all the weekly and daily tasks as stated, you will get 1,000 points. So that's definitely worth considering. And you know, you can use your uh, mobile app every single day. That gives you five points. And yeah, you just amalgamate. All the activities are being rewarded, and I think that's really very, very good. And most importantly, you will have um, a couple of games that will be departing from Xbox Game Pass, and um, that will be deliver deliver us uh, the Moon console and PC, uh, Gato Roboto uh, console and PC, and then War Groove console and PC. They'll be departing on April the 15th. And Madden 15, 16, 17, 18, 25 and NHL 18 and 19 will depart from EA Play. You'll recall that EA Play is now part and parcel of Game Pass, so all the games are coming and going. Many new titles are there to be introduced and for us to enjoy. Never ever has there been a better time to crack on with online gaming, so I really can highly recommend it to everyone. Right, so these are the news. These are the news we got on the wires, and uh, in fact, I could probably tell you a bit more, but we'll leave that for tomorrow because, due to the pandemic, I don't get the news from Xbox on the wire. Um, I should say from Xbox uh, wire every single day. <coughs> they do them a couple of times a week, so we can just spread out the nice little news for everyone to enjoy and to discover all the titles, all the developments, and everything that's happening out there in the industry. Uh, although the news on Xbox Wire are all kind of Microsoft related, when you read them you will get an overall picture of what's happening in the industry, so always very, very good to get through all of that. Right, so we have now a couple of questions that would have come in from our friends, our community members, and uh, I'm very glad to see that one of our friends was watching yesterday um, our podcast, or maybe he, he, he listened to it through playback, not sure. And he said, uh, it's Jason, Jason from NYC. He said, Daniel, I've been watching your streams really for a couple of years, and thank you for providing us with a wonderful Destiny experience. And very, very good to see that you're running a podcast which is full of interesting bits of trivia, news, and overall uh, perception of uh, video game industry as it stands today. We are very grateful for uh, all of uh, your comments, views, tips, tricks and pointers. I tried The Outer Worlds the other day and I loved it. I think it's a wonderful game and like for yourself, it was left on the back burner for quite some time. So I'm just glad to, to have heard you uh, and uh, to have listened to all of your experiences uh, of The Outer Worlds so far. That really drew me to it. Uh, he says then, I, I also listened to uh, the um, discussion on um, backward compatibility and all that's happening and arising within the um, Microsoft quarters. I'm quite curious how you see it, because the game you suggested, The Outer Worlds, is indeed a Microsoft exclusive and we can't really play it on PC or um, Xbox uh, on or, or PlayStation unless we are members of the Xbox Game Pass. Uh, uh, ultimate community. So how do you see that evolving? Uh, what do you think is going to be happening between PlayStation and Xbox? Are they likely to be um, running a, 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 a war or is there going to be a reconciliation and a new way forward? Well Jason, that's a, that's a very interesting question. I mean first of all I want to thank you for uh, being a dedicated community member and for certainly uh, listening to my podcast and embracing one of our recommendations. Thank you for that and I'm glad to see that you're enjoying the outer world as much as me. I find the game to be absolutely extraordinary and a truly terrific one. And uh, coming back to the core question, Microsoft versus PlayStation, backward compatibility versus uh, new games, and exclusive games on PlayStation versus non-exclusive titles uh, cross-platform access on Microsoft. Well, it's a, it's a lengthy question, it's a lengthy discussion, and I can certainly tell you I have uh, uh, no doubt about how this is to be uh, developing in the near future. Microsoft is leading the way for the new technology. They obviously have both uh, human and any other resources available in order to pursue it quite speedily in view of the pandemic. And we've seen some of those revolutionary inventions such as 360 and Xbox original backward compatibility on xCloud. So it means that the games like Morrowind and um, Perfect Dark, which previously would have been played on uh, old consoles, are now accessible through Android. 
and for anyone who is uh, kind of a long time gamer they can just subscribe to the package which is the game pass and you get the cloud access and then you can just play it on your mobile phone well that's extraordinary that's never been possible in the past and I actually tried Morrowind both on my console and Android it plays beautifully it's been reworked remastered better frame rate better dialogue better atmosphere better music and uh, I have a, a, a very very good game of phone which is Sony Xperia 5 II one of the best in fact um, that the industry has at present and when you listen to it you know either on the speakers or through your headset it's extraordinary it is as good as it would be on your console and you can do it wherever you are so that is something you cannot wrestle with that's that's you know state of the art technology that's the future and I think Microsoft will be overtaking massively certainly within the next 18 to 36 months on that front uh, Sony do not have the their cloud service and they were talking recently about doing a partnership with um, Microsoft in order to connect um, their services in order to provide instant saves and various other things that PlayStation does not have and isn't it extraordinary if you were to be connecting with um, 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 let's say a, a game that you played on Xbox 15 years ago I'll give an example Fallout 3 right or Oblivion and you were then accessing these games through cloud uh, you are going to be able to access the save that you did have 15 years ago so you would be able to start where you left off and you know it's 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 mind-boggling this is possible because previously you remember you had to have extra memory cards and you had to save them in console and you had the manual saves auto saves and there were some sort of, you know there were problems with saves today this is no longer an issue you access your game on xCloud and you go back immediately to the save which it had 15 years ago and you can really start from there if you let's say had not completed the game and you will know that in Fallout even if you completed the campaign you will still have lots of uh, um, side quests and other things to do so that's that's the future the way I see it um, instant access on all platforms and also not having stuff which is fully exclusive I think generally they will have some titles that will be initially exclusive to Microsoft and you know if you can for instance play the game on your tablet or Android phone or if you can um, download it to your PC or play it on your console it gives you like a multitude of different options and obviously most people who are hardcore gamers will have everything available so uh, I mean, I'm quite surprised because in my community we've had only a few people who uh, are in possession of both consoles. It seems that they're still quite territorial. They'll either go for PlayStation or for Xbox. And I think today we are living in times where it's almost necessary to have both consoles because if you want to enjoy the very best titles, you want to be fully involved with everything that's out there in industry, uh, you definitely will want to be uh, connected with both consoles. We have Deployman in here. Hello, Deployman. How are you doing? Thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Always good to see you, sir. And uh, we have several um, members of our community who also work in the video game industry, so they, they use all platforms at all times, and they all said, well, you know, this is the future. Sony will have quality and excellence in other compartments. So first of all, they'll be producing exclusives, which means Horizon Zero Dawns and Days Gone's and, you know, the... Uh, um, all the other uh, the strang the stranding types of games will remain Sony exclusive. They will not share them with other platforms. And these are fantastic games. They're you know phenomenal on the audiovisual front, and they've been thoroughly enjoyed by you know hundreds of millions of people worldwide. So they will carry on with this model, and also they'll offer these games. I think eventually to the streaming services, which is not the case of you know at present. But they'll have to do that. They'll you, c you could see that they're already tailoring their economic model uh, uh, and comparing it to, to the one offered by Microsoft uh, with the recent changes it's likely that um, Sony will be giving us some heavyweights through PS9 subscri uh, PS Plus subscriptions as well which is what we did see for quite some time and you know there will be other benefits Days Gone for instance accessible and available uh, this month through uh, PS Plus services and you get it for free and otherwise it ga the game costs about 40 pounds and again another um, Sony exclusive so it's possible that they'll be looking at I guess ec um, promoting the whole concept of needing to have the exclusives even more you know like pursuing the point we do not want to be doing cross-platform we want to be doing our own thing whether this is going to be 
performing well financially in the long term is another matter. I think if there's one area where PlayStation have advantage, that is instant access to their uh, internet-based live services. They they are accessible in the vast majority of the countries around the world, so they, they don't have the same sort of regional uh, selection and division compared to Microsoft, and that is the sole reason as to why Xbox overall had not taken off in certain parts of the world. You will have Xbox in certain countries where it's like really busy and you know loads of people having it, and in other countries nobody would even consider it. In fact, when I went to Infogamer, which is in Croatia, that was um, a couple of years ago, I talked to people in there and absolutely no one no one was interested in Xbox and it was a fantastic well display of games and consoles and screens and everything there dedicated to Microsoft nobody wants to go there everyone was uh, going to uh, the section dedicated to um, PlayStation because uh, they couldn't access in that country some of the uh, um, live services and that was the reason now for people not to be interested so I think Microsoft will have to consider you know ex the, that degree of expansion they'll need to have free access to all the live services in uh, all the countries worldwide and uh, I think that will certainly facilitate the better sales of the consoles and um, in any case if we were to be looking at one against another I guess our friend Jason from NYC asked the question you know what do I think whether one's going to be better than another I think they will carry on with separate dimensions it's unlikely that uh, there will be problems for either of those companies. I think if you're considering what newer gamers or younger gamers will want in view of what we are getting now with Netflix and you know with Amazon Prime and various other platforms, Spotify, it's instant access. And whether PlayStation will do something which is exclusive to them in terms of um, instant access remains to be seen. But presently they do not have the means to which uh, you are going to be using xCloud services on all platforms and you know therefore they're lagging behind maybe they will buy a share in, in whatever Microsoft is doing and therefore establish it at a later date we'll have to see if you're looking at the streaming services PlayStation has a fantastic library of games more than 700 and uh, many of those are the games you could not get otherwise here in Western Europe there are lots of uh, Japanese and Asian RPGs which are terrific and uh, in fact I've read some reviews in PC Gamer and uh, Games Informer um, where uh, Games Radar uh, where the reviewers indicated we always want to play these games but it was not possible before we had access to them through the streaming services and uh, uh, you know so it's 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 a, it's a quantity of titles and it's lots of titles that previously you, you couldn't access uh, here in Western Europe whilst Microsoft is more niche they're looking at the inclusion of uh, top-notch indie games together with um, a selection of very large selection of blockbusters and recently obviously bringing in Bethesda and EA uh, they expanded on the number of heavyweights so if you're looking at I mean, how do I put it if you're looking at the the overall um, quality of titles if you're interested in um, heavyweights triple A blockbusters or if you're interested in indie games well I think you're likely to be swinging towards um, Game Pass because it's a variety and they also rotate quite a few games I think particularly with smaller titles they come and go and uh, easy to download they're fairly small you know storage wise and you can play them straight away stream them if you want so you know both both companies are offering something distinctly different and I use my PS and Xbox every single day for various things and you know obviously playing PS games on Sony's console and uh, using um, Game Pass and uh, xCloud very extensively on Xbox and it provides me with a kind of full experience of what we can get to on consoles. Um, my personal take on this is that Microsoft is a bit more advanced and they're pursuing their own technology which will be giving them certainly s significant dividends and you know it's all well and fine we can access the games on Android and tablet but will the gaming community want to do that? It's obviously new, it's hyped up at the moment and th there's a lot of interest but if there's one thing that um, uh, certainly would interfere with my gaming pleasure it's the size of the screen because your phone is very very small so certain games will be more popular and more accessible on Android but if you want to have a very um, high quality experience of open world you will want to do Gears of War and Fallout 76 on a big screen it's just the way it is but to be fair 
it is like something you're given as an add-on. It's it's an option. What you can do is you can be watching or playing the game like Gears of War or let's say Fallout 76 on your home setup and then you want to do some harvesting, you want to do some menial tasks and you can go to your park, you can go to your garden, your courtyard, you can go up and about, you know, local cafe and then you can do these harvesting uh, uh, actions and activities out there on your phone. Uh, I think some games are likely to be more suitable for, not suitable, but they look and feel better on Android. You know, it's a bit like the games especially created for Android compared to the ones which were made for big screens and the overall very massive all-out open world <coughs> gaming experience. But I still think the technology is very advanced and uh, I really love the idea of being able to play all the titles that Xbox ever released. Um, going back in time you're talking about a few thousand titles and uh, you know they've been releasing the game since about 2002 and being able to just you know stick the disc in or access the game through your account and then play it on your next-gen console instantly is, is of uh, tremendous advantage and benefit and uh, I certainly think that um, it's a force to be reckoned with you know because younger gamers and people of younger generation they're all watching Netflix and Amazon Prime using WhatsApp it's all about instant access and uh, instant access wherever you are right and that that will be certainly very popular they also drop the prices, they're offering different packages. I think the team running Microsoft and Xbox at the moment is a younger, uh, forward-thinking uh, team that is considering all that's coming from the community. So it's a very different business model compared to maybe 12, 13 years ago where in fact they were pursuing a very, very different selection of options and therefore, as you could see with Xbox One uh, as console, things didn't really pay off in the way as intended and uh, uh, the younger generation of executives who got in uh, really came up with some wonderful revolutionary ideas and certainly I, I believe that um, Xbox overall had blossomed under the leadership of Phil Spencer and his team and uh, it's a true delight to be listening to some of them when you know when they interviewed and providing us with some news all that is kind of to come out of their labs because it, 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 everything is very exciting and most importantly it's aligned with what the community wants. If you're looking at some of the best gaming forums which are both most ethical and most user friendly, all inclusive, you will find them on Microsoft. And you know, it's just the way it needs to be compared to some other forums like Twitch or Twitter where you can come across uh, very, very abusive comments and views. I've not come across one on Microsoft forums. But they need to integrate, you know, these forums better with um, the streaming apps. I think this is what they're working on at the moment. In order to communicate, you need to go to separate Microsoft forums which are not aligned with the games. They're like a separate message board and you get them on your tablet or phone. But it, it doesn't have the degree of interactivity. But, you know, you can't do everything at once. And that's just a fact. So coming back to uh, our friend Jason once again really very grateful for your dedication to the channel and for the fact that you're watching and listening to my podcast and hope I explained my kind of personal perspective on um, Microsoft versus PlayStation uh, and hope it helps but uh, I would just advise everyone if possible to get both consoles because they will be developing their technology and their ideas independently from one another and they will be always slightly competing but also providing the very best for the game is worldwide and um, you know it's when I think of certain games like Resident Evil I don't associate them at all with Xbox you know I always associate them with the PlayStation because obviously there were PS exclusives I played the trilogy the, the first three games on PlayStation 1 equally when I think of Gears of War if I think of the Outer Worlds or the Master Chief Collection they'll be always attached to Xbox and I don't have really a personal preference you know like people say I'll never do anything on console so I always do it on my PC it looks and it, it works so much better you know it's, it's a superior platform well that's the way things used to be but they're no longer that I think if you have Xbox One X or Series X you'll see that the graphics and the performance is definitely very very good it's very very close to the top-notch gaming rigs 
The only difference there for anyone who's a streamer is that on PCs you can do a lot more. You can have you know, extra overlays and skins and you can bring in lots of different apps that will give you animations and chat display and display on the screen and various other bits and pieces. But uh, for an ordinary gamer I think uh, we, we should have an open mind and uh, it's true. The FPS games like PUBG had performed always the best on PC because they were created for a PC. But not everyone, you know, ev not every game is, is an FPS competitive game, so we, we need to really consider that as well. And people like to play puzzlers and point and click games, and you know, the games are very, very um, old school animations. Like I played uh, Nightcall on um, Game Pass recently, introduced it here on my channel, and uh, it's all about the dialogue. It's not about animations, but the dialogue is phenomenal, and you get to know everything about the way Paris is today and the politics in France, and uh, um, you know, kind of uh, um, inter-ethnic relations of various groups that are living in France. Uh, you get to know a lot about the current status of Paris, the way the politics work in there on the kind of uh, city or the region level, and um, yet again, it's not at all about animations. It's not about being able to, you know, eliminate opponents or shoot the enemy or survive as long as possible. So it's, you know, it's quite alright, and I think certain games will be, I guess, uh, uh, more applicable to a specific platform. Certainly, Night Call is a game you can play with ease on your Android. Um, as are, as you know, see, there are lots of other games of the same sort, and um, I recommend them to everyone. What I'm trying to say is, if you like XCloud, you will select a, a group of games that will perform the very best easy to follow, you know, like a massive big um, characters and dialogues and, you know, popping up and unlike tiny little dots which you need to be controlling in order to get from one part of the screen to another. Um, so yeah, in my in my book, uh, Xbox and PlayStation are here to remain. They will be advancing their services on all levels, be it technologically or otherwise, and they will be still keeping their communities together. Don't forget, we have uh, many more people attached to PlayStation in certain parts of the world uh, compared to Microsoft's and uh, you know equally you'll find that uh, in America for instance people are divided between two consoles and uh, I think overall experience of mine has been that the vast majority of uh, people in my gaming community would be doing it on Xbox and you know so it's, it's just down to the player preference and I guess also what you what you would have chosen initially when the consoles were created because if you were originally dedicated to a uh, PlayStation like myself obviously I could have said oh, I'm not really interested in the other I'll just carry on and that's that's going to be like my console but that wasn't the case to be and uh, I quite like the idea of um, Xbox original giving you the multiplayer access so you know you join you pay the um, Xbox uh, like gold and then you, you play multiplayer with Halo Combat Evolved and for that on PlayStation um, initially this was just like a complete impossibility A. there weren't games of that sort and B. you had to be purchasing uh, special adapters that were giving you access to multiplayer and um, it did take a little while for that to be developed so you know already were compatible the idea was that Xbox was already at that time to be a combination of a computer and a console and that's exactly the direction that Microsoft had been pursuing whilst PlayStation did remain a console and certainly the most popular console on the planet it needs to be stated they sold more um, pieces uh, you know more consoles than uh, any any other firm and uh, they remain certainly to be one of the most frequently used and the most popular wherever you go so I think there is future for everyone it will be down to the leadership and down to uh, people who are going to be running these companies if they carry on um, uh, uh, in the same way as uh, experienced at the moment I think there will be lots of lots of rewards for them to ripe and uh, you know we need to be patient and also we need to be supporting their efforts I think it's very important that we have uh, both consoles and a PC and then you know we invest in Steam invest in PlayStation and Xbox through not just uh, our purchases of certain games but the overall presence on various forums on which we are going to be you know sending uh, sharing our screenshots connecting with other members of our community connecting with our new friends and fans 
and generally being fully engaged with what is most important and that's connectivity and interactivity and without it obviously video gaming would not exist today and uh, just to add on to this at the moment all the games which are obviously the most popular are PvP games and multiplayer games because they become like major social networks you know Fortnite, Destiny, Warzone these are the games that have millions of people worldwide gathered every single day around someone's schedule like my schedule for instance and uh, you know they, they meet uh, every day to discuss the everyday activities and uh, all they're experiencing at the moment so it's, it's just really it's developed in a direction that nobody originally expected you know, nobody thought that a group of fans who were reading Rip Kirby or James Bond or Gears of War or Hellblazer, you know, or any of those graphic novels could then be integrated within such a massive big community of uh, gamers and uh, uh, participants worldwide. And uh, the tech facilitated, the tech made it possible. And as it's been the case with film, once you get new technology invented, then you also open up, you know, many options for the participants to use. And that's exactly what did take place with, um, you know, within the video game industry. So I think the next step will be sheer interactivity. At the moment, we are all kind of connecting and talking through party chat and through Discord. But in the future, all of that will be integrated. So we'll have a game that you'll access through a particular platform, and then you'll be able to hook up both with video and audio with everyone else who's there. So if you want it, the game becomes also your own Twitch, in addition to being a game and a social network. All of that comprised in one. So that's the future. All right, my friends, I think that was just about long enough for today. <laughs> my podcasts are very, very lengthy. I originally thought that I would do them for 45 minutes, but there's always something interesting to say. There are lots of news coming in every day, and most importantly, um, you know, you are writing every single day and sending me messages, and therefore I feel obliged to respond. And just please do carry on, do keep them coming. Really appreciate it, and really uh, love my community and certainly hope that my community is going to be growing as we carry on. I will be working, well, I've tried everything possible to get fiber optic internet in our local area, but unfortunately we are not getting it, and we're not getting it because uh, the um, our national provider, BT, do not want to provide us with infrastructure, and uh, I'm just hoping that once I get full fiber, sooner or later, we are going to be able to branch out somewhat, and, um, you know, because the picture quality of my streams is very poor due to the broadband connection but with fiber we should be really raising the bar and uh, it would also enhance my ability to do pvp because on broadband it doesn't really provide us with enough speed in order to compete and we know it all obviously if you uh, anyone who's familiar with the differences and then anyone who's tried really playing warzone or and any other pvp games on fiber versus broadband will tell you exactly what the score is all right my friends well thank you for watching our podcast today thank you for writing and supporting the channel thank you to jason for his great question about um playstation and xbox and once again i'm very grateful for your comments and views for embracing the outer worlds and for watching my podcast so we'll be back tomorrow with the usual and uh, um please uh, do carry on with the social distancing measures in britain we are already well vaccinated we have like 32 33 million people who had received the first injection but certainly i would like everyone else to be adhering to social distancing rules and make sure you're keeping healthy safe and well enjoying your games make sure you play your very favorites share your views with us on twitter and uh, just be a, a, a very valued very dedicated member of our ethical gamers community so thank you for watching and i shall see you all tomorrow take care